Ahsoka airs on the 23rd of August, which is very, very soon. And we got a very fast way for you guys to get caught up before the show starts. Let's get to it. Welcome back, hyper drivers and newcomers. I'm the Medina Lorian. I'm Leek, aka that Star Wars bloke. And here on the Hyperdrive, we talk about Star Wars weekly. If you like Star Wars like we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can jump to light speed every week with us right here on the Hyperdrive. So, like we stated in the intro, Ahsoka is a week away. It's coming, it's coming fast. And you may not be ready to watch the show. You don't know the backstory yet. There's a lot of episodes to watch to get caught up on Ahsoka's story. There's so many great episodes in the Clone Wars and in Rebels, especially in Rebels, that you could spend over a week just watching all this content and, and it would be enjoyable. But if you want a very fast way to get caught up so that you're ready to go and you know most of her story, we got several episodes here for you guys to watch and it'll only take you about half a day to get through it. So let's jump into it. The very first episode that uh, is essential to watch is the Clone Wars movie. What'd you think about that one, Luke? Yeah, this is epic. This one was like the introduction to the series in a movie form. It was awesome. I mean, it 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 kind of if if all you watch is this to kind of get the sense of that and introduce yourself to Ahsoka, you're in a pretty good spot. Like it yeah, kind I, of explains that dynamic and all those different things. It definitely does. It definitely shows you uh it introduces you to Ahsoka. It it, it shows you how she became Anakin's uh, Padawan. Um, and it, it, gets you, it gets you right into the swing of things, right into the war and all that. And it just sets the stage for everything that she's going to be dealing with uh, throughout the years uh, as Anakin's Padawan. So, And there's so many um, amazing uh, quotes that come from this movie with it, Rex and um, Obi-Wan yeah. and Anakin and pretty much all the memes that you see today from that era is, is from this movie. So That's the very first one. Now, the season one is is also pretty good. It's a little bit tough to get through. It's it's little gears more towards uh, kids. So there are some good episodes though. Uh, but for me anyway, it gets real good when you get to season two, episode twelve, and this is called the uh, the man. It's the Mandalorian plot. So the reason why I added this into this series, it actually doesn't even feature Ahsoka in this episode, but. It sets up what happens and why Ahsoka ends up on Mandalore towards the end of the Clone Wars. So this episode uh, talks about the underlying issues that are happening on the planet of Mandalore. It introduces you, introduces you to Pre Vizsla. It introduces you to Team Kreese. Uh, Kreens. <laughs> Kreens. It, it, bring, it introduces the Darksaber. Uh, lots of things happen on this episode that are very important uh, that set the stage for Mandalore and, and everything that's to, 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 uh, that is to come towards the uh towards the end of it and even into the mandalorian tv show i think season one i mean i'll go as far as saying i almost hated the ahsoka character after that first season yeah. like she was hard she was jarring man like that that was tough so if you are going through all of those things bear with it if you are watching season one because it does get infinitely better i think satine like you say in the mandalorian thing such a good character we get to learn a little bit humane element of ob as well which is pretty pretty dope. right right yeah you, yeah you see the dynamic between uh, yeah. uh kenobi and her i really enjoyed that Quite the dynamic yeah yeah the, <laughs> and and such an interesting story with those two it's because of the the whole thing with anakin and, and padme right we, exactly. we only saw uh kenobi advising anakin in in the clone in the attack of the clones right you, you let me come to find out you if he can has kind of see own. there is um, why there's <laughs> maybe a little bit of empathy there for that position and why nothing is uh, mentioned and hushed up. Right, right. Moving along forward, we're going to go right past season in right past season two, right past season three, right past season four, and we're going to jump right into season five. So season five starts the issues that happen in Mandalore. And again, this has nothing to do with Ahsoka in the episode, but this is when Darth Maul uh, gets brought back uh, and he's uh, brought to Mandalore, he meets Pre Vizsla, and the two of them hatch out a plan to remove Satine as the ruler of Mandalore, and then in, uh, put in place uh, Pre Vizsla. These are the actual events that happened that uh, set the stage for Darth Maul to take over and and uh, become the ruler of Mandalore and the ruler of the Death Watch. These were epic episodes. The whole, in my opinion, Clone Wars is like 
I know we've got the emperor and we've got all this stuff, but it's the mall story arc that is the thing <laughs> to watch. <laughs> like yeah. him coming back from where you know where we were in the Phantom Menace to this, and the character development and Sam Sam um, with Sam uh, yeah, you know the voice. Mm -hmm. My goodness, enjoy those if you haven't seen them. Yes. Yes, they're 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 epic. I mean, it's still to to this day. Aside from the final episodes of the Clone Wars, I would say these are my favorite episodes of the Clone Wars. Um, yeah. So see, that's season five, episode fourteen to episode sixteen. Um, it's it's a little bit to unpack. They're super enjoyable and they go by fast. Uh, I still rewatch them. So definitely one uh, that you definitely want to want to watch. Right after that one ends. You also have episode 17 to episode 20. Now, these are super important episodes because these cover the bombing of the Jedi Temple and what leads Ahsoka to leave the Jedi Order. Very emotional episodes. Brutal. Absolutely yeah. brutal. Yeah. The animation was good. It was dark. And it also, another good thing about that is you actually see Anakin uh, turning. You can actually see his reasoning even better, I think, than they did in Revenge of the Sith. Well, it's one of the reasons. It's, uh, Ahsoka is one of the key elements of his life right that starts right. to question the jedi order it's like in this being explained like after we've seen revenge of the sith after we've seen all this transformation to come back and kind of watch these like narratives that lead up to it is just amazing but yeah the betrayal in there um and then the lack of trust in ahsoka i mean it's it's the downfall of the jedi order these episodes yeah and that episode was heartbreaking for me because, again, remember, we, we just as we said earlier, both of us really didn't like Ahsoka in season one. Yeah. And when she was leaving, when she left the order in, in this episode, I was tears. all but in tears. Yeah, um, it, totally. it's an extremely emotional episode. Um, very well animated. The acting was incredible. Every, everything about these episodes are great. Um, the transformation in what you thought of that character and your connection with them was absolutely incredible. And I think Ashley Eckstein did such an amazing job to develop this character. All right. So after these episodes, Ahsoka's now gone. We're going to skip past season six and we're going to go right into season, season seven. And it's the final four episodes of season seven that you definitely want to watch. Uh, these all intertwine with Revenge of the Sith. Uh, they actually have scenes uh, that that kind of mirror what's happening in Revenge of the Sith. So it's fun to actually watch these while you watch Revenge of the Sith. Like sometimes like I will watch it and then jump back and forth, yeah. especially towards the, the end. They've um, reanimated, they've reanimated. Um, well, they've animated some of the Revenge of the Sith moments, which is amazing. Yes, they did. Um, but it's, but it's yeah. awesome. This is the, the siege of Mandalore. Uh, and this has shows Ahsoka coming back. Uh, it shows her helping Bo-Katan to take back Mandalore. Uh, from Darth Maul, and then it leads into Order 66. And probably one of the most epic lightsaber duels yeah. you have ever seen. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> that was so, really good. The Ahsoka versus Darth Maul? Oh, man. Yeah. That's killer. I, I Dude, I watch those on the regular. Right? Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I'm constantly watching those episodes. Agree. Once you get done with the Clone Wars, the next thing up is Tales of the Jedi. The final episode of Tales of the Jedi is the most important for Ahsoka. There is another one in there that will fill a, li a little bit of uh, her her training and how she's able to overcome the events that happen in Order 66, um, which is also a really great watch, arguably something that's, that you could watch. They're very short, too, so if you wanted to throw that on, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, but if you just want to like, get through it with some speed, the final episode is really the one that shows Ahsoka now in hiding. And she's uh, hiding, on hiding on this planet. She's a farmer. And the uh, sixth brother comes after her. And this is her battle with this guy. And then how she comes back and, and to join the rebellion. I think seeing that, I think you're right. Like that episode of her training, which isn't in the shortlist, but um, it explains how she survived 66, basically, right? By Anakin pushing her. But yeah, yeah. The, her, her, on this, her on this planet farming, her kind of hiding, it's really interesting. And then I think if you parallel that with like the Cal Kestis storyline through the video games as well, like yeah. you kind of, you start to see these little narratives of all these amazing Jedi that are just getting on with life and trying to exist. So it's very, very cool. Yeah, and also on a side note too, if you, if you have the time to read it, there, there is the Ahsoka Tano book. And actually, if you want to hear the audio, Ashley Eckstein narrates it for you. And it tells this exact same story at length. 
Uh, it's a little bit different, and it, it but it's definitely worth the listen. I, I, I checked that out. Uh, I, I heard it while I was at the gym over like a week. It was pretty good. So awesome. I haven't listened to that. I'll check that out too. Oh, it's really good, man. It it just it it changes the events of what you see in Tales of the Jedi just a bit. I think they kind of like um reimagined it for the animation. Yep. Uh, but it has essentially the same story in there. So it's it's definitely worth it. All right. So now we're out of the Clone Wars. We're getting into Rebels. Rebels is 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 great. Rebels is it was the okay. toughest for me to uh try to get concise is because especially towards the end there's so many great episodes um that you're gonna you're gonna want to see these things so hopefully you want to revisit it later uh but we'll start off at the beginning episodes one and two of season one introduce you to the ghost crew and this great is really this episodes. is really imp important right? i mean they're not the best episodes of rebels mm -hmm. but the fact that you get to kind of know the dynamics and meet ezra bridger for the first time and kind of see that struggle it, and and also introduce you to some pretty amazing characters kanan hera actually yeah, hera right. hera's going to be in ahsoka yeah. this is the very first time that we saw her sabine she's also going to be in the uh in the ahsoka tv series zeb we was in mandalorian yeah so and chopper and chopper but yeah we've got we've also got some pretty pretty epic uh epic villains right yes yeah the inquisitor yeah that, it's great they that those uh those episodes were it, it it was it was very jarring at first when i first watched that because i felt like we we went right back to season one of the clone wars so again season one is a little bit of a rough watch because it feels kind of very you know geared towards uh kids uh but it picks up again right at season two actually the end mm -hmm. of season one really which is where i'm going next so the final episode of season one is the uh siege of lethal you can see darth vader we get to see Tarkin and Ahsoka returns in this episode. Lots of good stuff on on that one. Yeah, seeing seeing Ahsoka in this episode um, and the development from where she left off in the Clone Wars was pretty incredible. And at the time, like when this was released, no one knew Ahsoka was coming back. This right. was like this was like the big bloody yeah. reveal. It's like it you was. know she walked anyway. You watch it; it's amazing. It's epic. Yeah. Season two picks off right where season one left off. And you have the first two episodes, Darth Vader's hunting down Ezra and Kanan. Uh, this, what's important about these episodes really is this is when uh, Vader realizes that Ahsoka is alive. And this is when Ahsoka realizes that Vader's Anakin. Yeah. So very emotional uh, beginning to season two. And season two really has some good stuff in it. You move forward to the ending episode, which is uh, 21 and 22, Twilight of the Apprentice. This is uh, where we get reintroduced to Darth Maul again. Somebody that did not expect to see uh, ever in again. And what what a character he yeah. has become! Like it's, I, it's unexplainable until you watch this episode. It's amazing. If Some you haven't seen, episode. oh my god, you're gonna see like the human element to Jedi's in Ezra in this moment, right? When mm -hmm. he's kind of like you're seeing the the subtlety of the balance between the light and the dark side of the force and how that can kind of intertwine into individuals. And then of course the final battle with, uh, with Ahsoka and Vader, that was oh my God. killer. That was so good. Yeah. So that's where season two ends. Season three picks up and we get grand animal Thrawn's introduction. Super awesome episodes. We also get introduced to Bendu. Um, oh, Bendu. Oh my yeah. goodness. I forgot Super that was cool in character. This but Thrawn, I mean, you know, I, I think his Heir of the Empire books were maybe 92, 93, early 90s. Like, mm -hmm. the, and, you know, that character, that writing, absolutely epic. And then to see him, like, immortalized in animation um, and did an amazing job. Like, Filoni trans translated, um, you know, that that beautiful writing really well into this animation. Yeah. I'm so I'm looking that he's one of the characters I'm really looking forward to in this one. This is gonna be oh, good yeah. when he comes back. Moving a little bit forward, we have an episode on season three. So now we're moving on into season three, episode eleven. This is uh, visions and voices. So in this episode, this is when uh, Ezra uh, finds the dark saber again. So again, this is something that didn't expect to happen. The importance of this episode is this is how uh, Sabine uh, stumbles onto the dark saber and how it comes back into the whole existence of what's happening, and it also begins her training, which we were seeing now in the Ahsoka series that she's essentially being trained as a Jedi. Yeah. And she's, pretty, she's pretty good with that dark saber, particularly now with the context of Din Jaren and how difficult yeah. he found to use the dark saber. Right. So that like 
provides this additional context now to Sabine learning to wield this dark saber at this point. And yeah, I know there's a lot of people up in arms around her potentially being force sensitive and all this stuff, but I am really excited about seeing how Sabine has developed, particularly under Ahsoka's training. That's now season three has a lot of great episodes. I'm going to skip past some of them, but I'm just going to mention a few of them right now. Uh, right after this episode uh, of Voices and Visions, Season 3, Episode 15 through 16 are the Trials of the Dark Saber. This shows how Sabine gets trained with the Dark Saber. Um, so it's definitely something that you may want to double back to and, and check out if you want a little bit more story on Sabine. You also have the episode called Twin Sons. This brings the battle against uh, Darth Maul and, and uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Definitely an awesome episode to watch if you guys want to check that one out as well. Uh, but they're not essential to what we're probably going to see in the in the TV show. So we're going to skip past those. Just letting you know, honorable mentions, definitely ones to check out. We'll move on to season four, episodes one and two. Uh, this is the Heroes of Mandalore. This is when Sabine goes back to save the Mandalorian uh, culture from the Empire. And then it also brings back Bo-Katan. Bo-Katan, we see the different houses of Mandalore yeah. working together, various things, the divisions, the impolitical fighting there. Um, it's amazing, right? And particularly if you do what, you know, me and George are outlining here, watch the Clone Wars story arcs of Mandalore and then see how that develops into Rebels Mandalore, which then see how it develops into Mandalorian Mandalore. You really get a good sense of this. And I think that's why people that have slept or missed out on the animation pieces for whatever reason, they just have a slightly um, different view on um, shows like The Mandalorian, right? Because we've got this backstory. We've got all these developed characters and things like that. Definitely. But The Rebels, it, Mandalore, this story arc, it's incredible. It's fantastic. Actually, all of season four is definitely worth the watch. I, if, if it was me, I'd tell you, just sit through all of season four, but it's that's long. And if it was me, I'd just tell you, watch all of Rebels. All of it. Yeah. <laughs> jumping up, for, jumping past that, season four, episodes nine and ten, is the most emotional animation I've ever seen in my damn life. Essentially, what happens in these episodes is there is a siege against the Empire that Hera plans, and it goes awry, and uh, Ezra and Kanan are forced to try to save Hera. Uh, it doesn't end well. For, for the heroes. I'm not going to go any further than that with that, I think. I don't want to like ruin it completely if you haven't seen it. So it's also their relationships with each other too, you know, mm -hmm. like, so too, like we've gone through this journey of like how they're interconnecting with each other, which is the big thing with Rebels. There's these bunch of misfits that have all come together from different walks of life that have built these bonds. Yeah. And then this episode just like it, it is, I, I mean, I cried in this episode and I yeah, still I up. like, Love it, man. It's, it's good. All right. So you can just continue watching on if you want to jump a couple of episodes, episodes 12 all the way to the end. Fantastic. Super awesome episodes. This has, shows the uh, world between worlds, which we're supposed to see in Ahsoka. Introduces you into that, um, which is like a time thing, time element. Um, so that's kind of cool. Brings the Emperor in to the into the whole animation series. And we obviously get the ending, you know, with uh, with. Ezra and Thrawn and you know where the rebels are and there's a time jump that happens uh, at the very end of the whole thing and then that'll directly yeah. lead you into Ahsoka basically some of the see some of the scenes that we've seen <clears throat> in the Ahsoka trailers are mimicking you know the animation scenes that we see at the end of this episode so right. it's it's pretty special like if you do I would watch this episode. Like if you're looking at like one episode to watch, watch this episode because you're going to see, you're going to see those connections, aren't you really? It's um, definitely it's pretty awesome. Yeah. He recreated it almost a uh, uh, scene for scene in those trailers. Yeah. So I'm and assuming you... it's going to be a flashback, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I, I don't know we'll either, see. but um, one of the, the mural walls that you, you see in the show that's in the animation, you actually got to see that at San Diego, right? Yes, I did. It was yeah. cool. It was so like, neat seeing that in person, man. It's like you're, I felt like I was in the show. It was, it was really cool. So special. So, uh, that's it for Rebels. That, that once you get done with that, the next time she comes back is in The Mandalorian. So, in, in that episode, 
Din Djarin's looking for answers for Grogu uh, to try to find a home for him. And Bo-Katan leads him in search of Ahsoka, is essentially what happens. And she's on this planet fighting, um, I can't think of what that woman's name is, but she's oh, also the guy the there who magistrate. becomes the magistrate. That's right. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, She is going to be in the Ahsoka series also. So it's definitely an episode to watch just because it shows the dynamic between those two. Uh, she brings up Thrawn in that episode. Um, and then also the dynamic between her and Grogu and and uh, and the Mandalorian yeah. is cool too. I think, and if coming from that, I mean, you, it kind of hints that Ahsoka is somewhat hunting Thrawn as well, doesn't mm-hmm. it? Or at least looking for him or being aware of it. So there's an interesting, again, watching Rebels for the first time, if that's what you're doing, and then re-watching this episode, it's going to add that extra dynamic to what's happening in the Mandalorian that I think will um, be really exciting for you to re-experience that. Definitely, definitely. So all of that together is about 13 and a half hours of watch time. That's something that you could do in an, in an afternoon if you really want to binge it. I know I've binged whole seasons on Netflix <laughs> in, a, in like a night. Um, so I think it's very possible. You could even break it up over like a couple of days and you, you know, you're only talking about you know a few hours a day and, and you can very easily get through that and be ready to watch Ahsoka and just have that extra element like, like uh, Luke saying right there for you to be ready to watch this, you know, and have those aha moments, you know? <laughs> so. Totally. And we've got, um, there's like an extended list that me and George made as well. We'll put in the description, some of those extended things. Like if you want to learn a little bit more about Kanan Jarrus, as an example, there's a couple of bad batch episodes right at the yeah. beginning that show him as a Padawan escaping order 66. And, yeah. and then Hera so, too. And Hera. Episodes. Yeah. 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 So, you know, if you really want to deep dive, that doubles the time. That's going to take it to at least 30 hours of watching. Yeah. Um, but if you want to do that, you can. And if you want to go all 100 and something hours, just go hard and don't sleep and watch it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. It is worth it. I think it's absolutely worth it. Yeah. So, but that's it. That's our list. Let us know what you guys think about this one in the comments below. Again, I did a shorter version of this on the short. So if you guys want to check that out as well, you know, just so you can keep up with things. If you're watching the episodes and you forgot which one to go next or you want to write it down, that's an option as well. But thanks for hanging out with us. Let us know what you guys think about all this in the comments below. Until next time, may the force be with you.